Hello, I'm Don Woods. We're sitting here today in beautiful Hollywood, California, in the legendary Capitol Records Tower, home of Blue Note Records. This is our world headquarters. When I first decided that I wanted to make records, I had a little reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape recorder uh, that was made by a company called Lafayette. It was kind of like Radio Shack, right? I had a Lafayette two-track that I discovered if you put scotch tape over the erase head, <laughs> you could overdub. It sounded like shit, but you could overdub. So that's really how I started making records. I became aware of producers pretty early on, you know, in the 1960s. That I don't think they, that they were that well known, but I think maybe starting with George Martin, the, the artistry of producing a record uh, came a little more into focus and you were aware of who was making the record. So I knew of Jimmy Miller and, and could hear the difference he made, you know, in the Rolling Stones records, but and I loved the Andrew Oldham records too. I mean, that's another producer who was influential to me. Uh, but uh, Jimmy, you know, doing Traffic and uh, all these other bands was. I, I loved what uh, what Tom Wilson and Bob Johnston did with Bob Dylan. I loved what Teo Macero did with Miles Davis and Thelonious Monk. I loved what Bob Thiel Sr. did with Coltrane and. And on, on Impulse Records. I loved what Alfred Lyon did at Blue Note Records. It's amazing, you know. I, when I, as a teenager, I discovered those records and buying those Blue Note albums and seeing those black and white photos and seeing Rudy Van Gelder's studio. And it just looked so cool, man. It was all black and white, high contrast, heavily shaded, everyone smoking and playing saxophones and dressed really cool. And I, I just wanted to be one of those guys. I, I wanted to be in that room one way or another. In Detroit, there, there wasn't really a clear path to become an apprentice recording engineer or producer. There were a couple of engineers in town and they weren't divulging their secrets <laughs> too easily, you know. Uh, I met a guy named Jack Tan who had a little Tascam studio. He had a Tascam 8-track and a Tascam board, the very first one that they made, early 70s. Probably cost, you know, like four or $5,000, but I was able to learn the principles of multi-track recording. I just I went in there, I kind of conned them into thinking I knew more about it than I did, and I started doing sessions in Detroit. It's $15 an hour, and that, that's not what I got paid. That's what people paid for the studio. <laughs> <laughs> I got a buck twenty-five or something on that fifteen, and uh, but he he enabled me to learn, and then he joined up uh, with a guy named John Lewis, who owned a studio called Sound Suite in Detroit, which is you know Bob Seger recorded there, uh, Bootsy recorded there, Aretha Franklin recorded there. Jack persuaded them to give me the keys after midnight, and I could come in after twelve, and just make records all night and I could stay until the next session came in. And, and maybe they didn't come in that day, so I, had, I just stayed up for two days and just kept making records. I didn't know how anything worked. I didn't even know how, I didn't know you had to align the, the tape machines. We made our first Was Not Was album, went to the mastering room in, in New York City, and, and the guy said, where are the tones? What do you mean tones? I didn't, no one told me you had to align the machines. So that meant every session, it, the, whatever we recorded that day was out of alignment with whatever we recorded the day before. And I was so embarrassed, I, I ran back to the record company. I said, oh, I, I left them in, in the office. And I got some tones from Kid Creole and the Coconuts, which really had nothing to do with the record we cut. But at least I could say, yes, here are the tones. And I looked professional. And the first record sounds like it. It first was not was album. It'll, uh, it'll empty a room at a party, you know, at a thriving party. But I, you just learn by experimentation. Mm -hmm.